Will Young, you talk in the book uh, very movingly about this idea of gay shame and how debilitating it was for a very long time. I mean, it's a generalisation, but do you think things are different for children and young adults now? I do think things are different in terms of if I, if I look back to what was available to me, and when I say available, I mean, you know, who did I see on television in the cinema screen? Who did I see in the charts? Um, you know, what what charities or what, what information do I have access to? Um, it's far better now. I think uh, I still am woefully disappointed by schools and the lack of proper education. But also I, I ask myself the question, why are gay actors still often encouraged by their agents to not come out until the end of their careers? Footballers, sports people, you know, there must be a reason for that. Um, there's probably not such obvious gay shaming as there was, for example, in the Chris Moyles, when in, in a very negative way he kept calling you gay, gay over a kind of almost like a skit that went on for minutes. And I mm. wonder why you didn't complain about that at the time. Yeah, it's and I, I, I mention that occasion with him because it was an example of a massively popular radio show. I didn't feel that I had the backup to be able to go for it. And also, you know, I was worried about my career. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to lose the BBC support, Radio 1 support. And I think this comes up time and time again with lots of different things. When well, you're you hear, talking about footballers as well. They don't want to lose the support. They don't want to lose, exactly. And the money that's involved. Or, you know, you even go back to... A lot of things comes back to people worrying about their, you know, the, the powers that be that rule yeah. over, you know, the patriarchy. You mm. see it in the Me Too movement, you know, the patriarchy that's ruling over those institutions. But do you think now that, you know, the society may talk a good game, but actually homophobia still exists? I think it's much better. I think, I think there's intentional homophobia yeah. and then there's um, unintentional homophobia and people get too muddled up with it and worry that they'll say the wrong things. Listen, I say the wrong thing the whole time. I'm so happy to be educated. And this is why I wrote the book. And, and also, you know, gay shame, just because when you've grown up in a, in a world where you feel the message is that you're wrong constantly, just because you then come out doesn't mean that that energy and thought in your body has gone away. You yeah. talk in the book, though, about the idea, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember if you use the term neutered, but actually it's OK to have a kind of neutered gay yes. life. You know, yes. for example, going back years, it would be Kenneth Williams and yes. Larry Grayson. exactly. That yes. you still have, uh, you, you're sort still of, unthreatening. And in some yes. way you say that uh, gay men somehow seem threatening in a way. Yes, I think to straight. Because if you think about it, you know, women, straight women might not necessarily threaten a man physically on a sexual level, but a gay man might make yeah. a straight person, a straight man go, oh, OK, this is, hang on, the, the, you know, the, it's more equal, do you know what I mean? And I think that's why uh, sexuality has been played down in the past, yeah. and certainly for my, the beginnings of my career, it was definitely played down. I mean, there was a conversation about me um, dancing with a male mannequin, you know, with the record company. They didn't want to have it in, in the video. The thing is, it's, it's a, it, I found it so interesting to write and really forensically go into the detail because if we want things to develop in, in any area of life, you have to go into, into the detail. You know, I have to look at, with Black Lives Matter, that's happened over the last three months particularly has come into my scope. I had to forensically look at myself and think, I don't know anything about this. I'm privileged, I'm white, I'm middle class. I need to learn about this, you know. And, so you and have to engage. So I wonder, you have to engage. And I wonder, as a mental health campaigner, you work a lot with LGBTQ, are trans people particularly, do you think, still having a very tough time? Yes, and I think that's why it is important to go back and look at these certain occasions, yeah. because it's all about language. And I think we'll very well look back in 20 years' time and go, oh gosh, we were not treating them right, and I don't think they are being treated right. You say uh, in the book, it's no longer, you don't, you don't need to be accepted. Why should anyone be accepted? It's just who you are. Yes. And there is no option. And you just yes. have to live an authentic life. Yes. Is that tough for a lot of people, to live an authentic life? Yes, I think it can be, for a, for a plethora of reasons. 
However, the true route to happiness is really to, to shed everything that's been put on us. For whatever reason, we all have it. And find that authenticity and self-empowerment in ourselves. And perhaps maybe lockdown has helped mm. a lot of us find that a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I found it even just growing my tomatoes. <laughs> wow. I mean, authentically, I am now a gardener. You are a gardener and yeah. you love gardening. I do. Will Young, thanks very much <laughs> Thank indeed. Thank you.